In the last few years, questions surrounding transgender athletes and whether they should be allowed to compete in women's sports have moved from the periphery of our national dialogue to the mainstream. Millions who had never previously given the issue much thought now do. The debate is raging, yet another battleground in our culture wars. At the heart of the matter, challenging questions about what constitutes fairness and how to achieve inclusiveness. Questions we're addressing in a three-part Outside the Line series. Today in part one, we start with the scientific considerations. What do we know about the chemical, biological, and muscular skeletal differences between men and women and how they affect athletic performance? What don't we know and how should we apply all of that to the discussion? The debate about transgender female athletes has been raging. Now to the ban on transgender track and field athletes from high-level women's events, including the Olympics. Trans college athletes will now be required to document sports-specific testosterone levels before their championship selection. The World Athletics Council has today taken the decisive action to protect the female category. Many believe there is insufficient evidence that trans women do not retain advantage over biological women. At the core of the issue, the science. What does science tell us about the differences between male and female athletes? In virtually every sport in which performance can be quantified, by the clock, the tape measure, or by weight, the most accomplished men outperform the most accomplished women. Why? It can be summed up, for the most part, in one word, testosterone. Little boys will generally outperform little girls in sports, but it's not by a wide margin. That all changes once boys hit puberty. Joanna Harper is a researcher at Loughborough University in England. She studies transgender athletes and has advised organizations such as the International Olympic Committee. At that point, testosterone increases uh, enormously. Testosterone is a hormone present in both males and females, but at vastly different levels. This initiates some major changes in terms of size, strength, bone structure, hemoglobin levels, which are very important for endurance. Testosterone increases protein synthesis, it increases uh, growth of bones, it increases uh, a lot of the factors uh, underpinning these changes in stature, uh, lean body mass, and uh, differences between the sexes in general. Tommy Lundberg is a physiologist at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden and the author and co-author of some of the most influential studies on gender in sports. Men have, on average, 40 to 45 percent more lean body mass or muscle mass than women have. And the differences in muscle strength are even more pronounced. Even at the lowest end of the range in males, cisgender men, that is those whose gender identity matches their sex at birth, still produce more than four times as much testosterone as cisgender women at the highest end of the female range. So really testosterone drives these sex differences and is then a really good marker for wh whether you have undergone and benefited from the male puberty versus if you have not. One of the key issues concerning transgender women athletes centers on those physical benefits that accrue as a result of undergoing male puberty, also known as testosterone-driven puberty. To compete in women's sports, transgender women are typically mandated to undergo hormone replacement therapy to reduce testosterone for at least one to two years. We see in essentially all studies published on transgender women undergoing controlled uh, therapy that they do reach female levels, around one to two animals per liter. There is uh, a, a reduction in muscle mass, muscle strength, muscle cross-section area. But experts such as Harper, who is transgender, say that testosterone levels are only part of the equation when it comes to mitigating the effects of male puberty. It's unlikely that trans women will uh, lose enough strength to get down to typical female values. 
when you later change or drastically reduce testosterone levels as an adult male, for example, we don't tend to see these large changes. So you, you can't really undo the male development you, during puberty. Citing these residual advantages, organizations such as the International Cycling Federation have outright banned transgender women who have undergone male puberty. But researchers caution that blanket policies may not account for all the biological factors involved. It is undoubtedly true that um, trans women will maintain um, advantages in some sports. Probably not so much in endurance sports, but in, in size and strength sports. Trans women will also have some physiological disadvantages. Our larger frames are now being powered by reduced muscle mass and reduced aerobic capacity. And that can lead to disadvantages in terms of like quickness, recovery, endurance, things that maybe aren't quite as obvious as being bigger and stronger. Which points to the complexity of the issue. And as far as the science goes, there is still much that is unknown. We are talking still about a limited population. It's difficult to do research uh, with the adequate number of subjects. It's going to take 20 years, 30 years before we have enough sports specific data to make definitive decisions. And of course, if they're banned, if all trans athletes are banned, where will we get the data? Most of the scientific data on transgender athletes has been collected from individuals who transition post-puberty, largely because there are so few athletes who transition before puberty, the scientific literature on them is very limited. For more on this topic, go to ESPN.com or the ESPN app. Tomorrow, part two of our series on the transgender athlete and the legal and legislative efforts to regulate their ability to participate in competitive sports. I think these laws are singling out how transgender kids are able to interact with the world. Like, she's not wanted in our state.